Thank God for the beautiful message in song. Amen? Amen. I could never get over that, uh, the lyrics of that music. You are the one that we praise. You're the one that we adore. Our hearts hunger for. Amen? Amen? Amen. The question is, what are we hungering for? Who are we hungering for? I guess most of you will say the potluck. <laughs> but I hope you're hungering for more than the potluck. You'll be hungering for Jesus. Amen? Amen? Amen. There was one time that I was uh, in my thoughts. It was really early in the morning. The Lord woke me up at around 2.15. And the Lord wanted me to spend more time in the Word. And then there was this thought that came into he in my head, and I know it was, it was, it was from the Holy Spirit. The, the question was, what is it that consumes you? What is it that consumes you? And then I begin to, to ask me that question, that question, consume me? And then I begin to realize what are the things that consumes us? For example, what are the things that you cannot wait doing while you're here? What are the things that's running in your head while you're listening to my sermon? What are the things that you cannot wait the sermon to end so that you could do back home? Those are the things that consumes us. And then the Lord brought me this thought. Whatever it is that consumes us will either exhaust us or sustains us. If Christ is not the one consuming you, my dear friends, you will be exhausted. But if Christ is the one who consumes you, Whatever you're facing, you will be sustained. Amen. Let us kneel down for our the prayer. Our great God, our dear loving Heavenly Father, our wonderful, merciful Savior, Lord, we praise you and we thank you for giving us this Sabbath. And we would like to greet you, Lord, a happy Sabbath. Thank you for giving us this gift. And most especially, thank you for giving us the precious gift of your Son. And Lord, I pray that this Sabbath will be no other like the other Sabbaths. May we have a clearer picture of you. Lord, we ask that you please teach us how to be hungry for you. And Lord, may you change the things that consumes us. And may Jesus be the only one that consumes us. And Lord, I ask that as we draw closer to you, Lord, please give us a clearer picture of you. Help us to know you even more. And thank you so much, Lord, that you have given us this day wherein our thoughts would be centered only upon you and upon you alone. Please, Lord, remove any burdens that's not supposed to be on our shoulders. Remove anything that hinders us from hearing your voice. Remove any doubt, any, any problem, any worry that's not supposed to be on our heads right now. And help us, Lord, to clearly focus upon our wonderful, merciful Savior that's hanging on the cross for us. And Lord, I ask that you please prepare our hearts for what you're about to do to, to us today. And Lord, once again, I ask that you please hide me behind the shadow of your cross, that I will not be seen or be heard. Lord, even the desire to be seen or to be heard, please remove them, that you alone will be seen, be heard, be lifted up, and exalted. And Lord, please pour upon us a full measure of your Spirit. For we ask this in the loving name of your Son, Jesus, all your children say, Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so while I was shaking hands a while ago, some people are, are telling me, Happy Sabbath, Pastor. My dear friends, I'm not a pastor. I'm a missionary. As I told the, the congregation in the first service, I always get ordained during Sabbath. <laughs> it always gets taken back after the service. <laughs> I'm a missionary, and when people know that I'm a missionary, the next question that they ask, so where is your mission field? And you know what? It's quite a complicated question for me to answer because I don't have a regular mission field, and I don't have a permanent mission field. And they tell me, how does that work? I said, when I'm back in the Philippines, uh, by the way, I'm a Filipino. I'm not a Japanese or Korean, I'm a Filipino. <laughs> but I know Filipinos are a little part of, of everything. So, and I tell them, when I'm back in the Philippines, 
I go to a different country in Asia almost every month. And when I'm in North America, I go to a different state almost every week. And they tell me, wow, that is quite an expensive lifestyle. And I said, yes, I have a very rich father. Amen? Amen. And then they asked me, oh, so who is your sponsor then? And I said, God is my sponsor. I said, no, 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 we know God is your sponsor, but tell me, who really is your sponsor? And I said, God is my sponsor. I was actually inspired by the story of George Mueller. For those of you who know George Mueller, so praise God. But for those who does not know the story of George Mueller, he lived in a time where almost nobody believed that there is a God who hears and answers prayer. So he lived a life to prove to people that there is a God who hears and answers prayer, that our God is real. Amen? Amen. So whenever he needed something, he does not ask for donation or solicitation. He just goes straight to his heavenly father, bends his knees, and when the answer comes, he knows for a fact that the answer came from whom? From God. And it's a proof that God hears and answers prayer, that our God is faithful. And by the way, he has an orphanage. Just imagine feeding like 200 plus kids without asking for donation, without asking for solicitation. That's scary, isn't it? At every time the Lord answers prayer. And when he passed away, they had a tally of every answer to his prayer. You know why? Because he judged it down in his, in his journal. And the total amounted to 7,250,000 US dollars. My dear friends, the first time I heard that, my first reaction was, wow. And when I saw the date, the date is 1800s. It's a bigger wow. When you convert it right now, it will amount to more than 100 million US dollars. I begin to realize, I have not taken the Lord seriously the way George Mueller took the Lord seriously. I have not prayed as much as George Mueller prayed. Everything that I have done in my life was only due to the fact that I could do stuff. And then I begin to realize I have to take God seriously. So I, I said to, to the Lord, okay, Lord, if you want me to be a missionary, this is one deal that I want with you. Because the Lord says in Malachi 3.10, as our brother prayed a while ago, I'm not be, I'll not be talking about tithes. We've been dealing about that. Maybe I'll touch that somewhere. But there is these two words that really jumped out at me. It says there, prove me. And in New King James Version, it says there, try me. My dear friends, God is challenging us to try Him. Amen? Amen. To prove Him. So I said, okay, Lord, if you want me to be a missionary, then I will not receive any salary. I will not receive any, any employment. I will only depend upon you. And I will only ask you. I will not tell people about my need. And I'll only come to you. And when the answer comes, I'll know for a fact that you are still existing. And my dear friends, every time I needed something, every time I'm going somewhere else, I'll bend my knees and I pray to the Lord and the Lord somehow will use other people. And this is how it goes. People will call me a few hours later or sometimes a few days later and the call goes like this. Hello, Jem, are you going somewhere else? And I said, yes, how did you know? Because I was asleep last night and the Lord woke me up and I could not go back to sleep until I resolved to give you a call the next morning. So where are you going? So I tell them, I'm going to Indonesia or Malaysia. And then the, the other line will say, okay, consider your tickets bought. My dear friends, this did not just happen once or twice, but this has been happening since seven years and four months of my life now. Because when we take God seriously, we will discover that we serve a faithful God, amen? A God that takes us seriously, my dear friends. And when you continually walk with Him, you begin to realize that He is not just a faithful God, but He is a consistently faithful God. So a friend of mine asked me this question. I said, Jem, I know you are not a, a theologian. You did not graduate in our, in our school. Until when do you want to be a missionary? And all the while I thought it was just like a side trip. It was just like a mission a mission trip, I begin to realize the Lord is bringing me into this missionary life. And when I look back in my, in my life before, and by the way, my dear friends, I was a photographer. I was a, a portrait photographer. I was a wedding photographer. Always the photographer, never the groom. So praise the Lord. <laughs> Single, but not advertising. <laughs> so, okay, let's move on. <laughs> so I told my friend, you know what? When I look back, when I look back on my old life before, 
that is so boring compared to the life that the Lord has placed in my path right now. So by God's grace, I want to be a missionary for the rest of my life. And then my friend told me, that, then you should have an evangelism training course. And I said, okay, so what do you suggest? I said, apply an amazing facts. I said, okay. And you know what? Amazing facts opened in the Philippines during that year. You know where? In front of our house. <laughs> in my home church. So, and my friend told me, so you're planning to go to Amazing Facts in the Philippines, don't you? I said, of course, it's just in front of our house. I said, no, 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 apply in Amazing Facts in Sacramento. I said, no, no, sister, it's so impractical. I said, why? Sister, Amazing Facts is in front of our house, like 30 cartwheels, two backflips, you're already there. <laughs> and then I don't have a visa. And I said, then apply for a visa. I said, oh, it's easy for you to say because you're not a Filipino. For a Filipino, it's like winning a lottery. And for a Filipino like me who does not have a regular job, it's like entering heaven. And then she said, Jem, you have been living by faith for the past two years. Why not move by faith now? She said, okay, let's move by faith. I was saying those words, let's move by faith, but faith was not present, my dear friends. I guess sometimes you are in that situation, huh? You're saying those words, wonderful promises, with God, nothing is impossible, but at the back of your mind, you're asking, really? <laughs> or sometimes you're even confessing it through your song, I surrender all. Hmm. We are the biggest hypocrites, aren't we? And I was the chief. I profess to my family and friends that I've been living a life of faith for the past two years, and now faith is needed, and faith is one thing that I don't have. So I told God, okay, Lord, if you want me to go, then you have to provide the interview fee, 160 US dollars. And 160 US for someone who does not have a salary is a fortune. But the Lord provided more than $200. Good for you, brother. You said amen. But you know what I said? Oh, this will just go to waste. <laughs> In our dialect, I said, sayang. But you know what, my dear friends? Do you know why I thought that? Because a year before that, I... My friend impulsively invited me to speak in New Zealand, so I impulsively applied for a visa. I got impulsively denied. So that rejection somehow weighed on my head, and I said, what chance do I get to get a visa, a U.S. visa for, for us? It's like an ultimate visa. And I said, it's nothing. But the Lord provided. The Lord was somehow faithful to his, to his part of the deal. So I moved forward. The moment, my dear friends, I paid the amount, I could not sleep. And for me, sleep is not a problem. I could sleep anywhere. I could even sleep when I ride in, in the airplane before the fast and seatbelt sign is off. I'm already out. <laughs> and praise God for, for manufacturing my body in a small package. Every accommodation is first class, my dear friends. I have a lot of leg room. I always look at my tall friends and say, it's hard, huh? <laughs> praise God, amen? So. And even in trains, back in the Philippines, we have this called, thing called LRT. In LRT in the Philippines, if you have a bag, you don't even have to hold it. It stays there. That's how packed it is. You will not be able to fall to the floor. you just stuck there. <laughs> and my friend watched me slept through the 45-minute ride. And I was sleeping, standing up. People were going in and out. And I said, mm. <laughs> yes, friends, I have the gift of public sleeping. But the moment I paid the amount, that gift was not there. Every night I fall asleep, I have nightmares. And the nightmares are always the visa interview. And I always get denied. And I always wake up, heart beating, and I could not sleep. And I'm and four, five, six, seven nights, and I was having sleepless nights. And I think on the sixth or seventh night, I realized that I forgot something. I forgot to pray. It's a sad thing, isn't it? Which ministry I'm involved in again? The prayer ministry. And my dear friends, this is one thing I realized. The Lord put me in the prayer ministry not because I'm the most effective prayer leader. The Lord put me in the prayer ministry because I needed prayer. Sometimes we think that we are a blessing to the ministry, aren't we? Sometimes we're thinking, if I'm not there, the ministry would suffer. My dear friends, no. The ministry is a blessing to us. If it not for the ministry, I don't know where I'd be right now. God is good, amen? amen? He uses us in spite and in spite of us. He could have used a donkey, and yet the Lord used me. 
God is good, amen? amen? So I woke up in the middle of the night and said, Lord, please help me out here. I'm disintegrating here. And when you don't sleep, you, you lose weight. And I'm thinking, I don't have the right to lose more weight. So, and I was pleading before God and I said, Lord, please help me what to do. I don't know what to do. And my dear friends, you know what? That's the best prayer that you can pray. And you don't know what to do. Most of the time we know what to do and we go to the Lord, we just bring to the Lord our plans and we ask the Lord, Lord, please bless this. And the Lord does not have a chance to somehow create this plan for us or reveal his plan for us because we have our own plan set up. So I ask, Lord, please teach me what to do. And the Lord somehow compelled me, open your passport. And I opened my passport and my passport was halfway stamped. For the past two years that the Lord has brought me around, the Lord reminded me, who took care of those travels? Who paid for your way? And I said, Lord, I forgot it was all you. We often forget, don't we? So then I said, Lord, I surrender this to you. The moment I said I surrender this to you, my dear friends, I slept like a baby. Now fast forward interview. I wore my long sleeves. I wore my tie. Of course, I did not wear my jacket. In the Philippines, it's too hot. You'll die there. So I, I waited for my, for my name to be called in. The moment I sat down, my dear friends, I could not breathe. I didn't know what was happening, but like all my insights were trying to come out, I did not even know that I was having panic attack during the time. I watched too many cartoons before, and I was imagining that my heart was literally jumping out of my chest. So I kept on looking down in my heart, and I'm thinking, Lord, I should not be in this position before the interview. Just imagine being asked, what is your name? My name is Jankato, and then you fall to the ground. That's not a good picture. So I was looking around and said, I need a place to pray. And then there's no place. And the Lord somehow gave me this thought, the toilet, the bathroom. I ran to the bathroom. Praise God, the U.S. Embassy bathroom is clean. I closed, I closed the cubicle, knelt down, clo closed the toilet seat and prayed, Lord, I needed, I needed that peace that you have given me. My dear friends, the Lord loves desperate prayers. Amen? This is one thing I've learned. When we seek God with all our hearts, any place in this world will be transformed into a prayer room. And the Lord gave me that peace that passes understanding. Now, it was my interview. The first question that was asked, Mr. Castor, yes, sir. How much is your monthly income? I'm thinking, I'm dead. The first thing was monthly income right away. And the Lord compelled me, be honest, you're a missionary, you're not supposed to lie. So I said, I'm sorry, sir, but I don't have a monthly income. I said, why is that? I'm a missionary volunteer, sir, so I don't get paid for my work. Then how do you live? I live by faith, sir, <laughs> which is true. And I said, I live by faith, too, but tell me, how do you really live? How do you buy your food? How do you buy your clothes? I said, the Lord provides, sir, which is true. Amen? Amen. And then he opened my passport. And friends, the only document that I brought was my passport. And he opened my passport and he said, if you're not paid for your work, how come you travel so much? And I said, sir, I'm in the prayer ministry. And the Lord uses other people to pay for my fare. I said, okay, but how about your hotel? How about your food? How do you survive outside of the Philippines without having any salary? And I said, sir, I live in the homes of those people who invite me and they feed me, which is true because the Tenerife, Tenerife family has been feeding me fitting me good. So I, I moved forward and, and then he said, he was, he, was now, he was now running out of questions. And then he came up with this very difficult question. He said, how about emergencies? Do you encounter emergencies? And I said, yes, sir, emergencies are unavoidable. Then how are you able to pay for emergencies? I said, sir, the Lord is faithful that the Lord provides the right amount of money for the right amount of emergency. <laughs> Which is true. And he asked me, so you receive money for emergencies? I said, yes, sir, the Lord is faithful. Then you just lied to me. He yelled at me, said, how come, sir? Said, because a while ago you were telling me that you don't receive any amount of money for your work. And now you're telling me that you receive money for emergencies. My dear friends, that's a difficult question to answer, isn't it? And remember my condition before? I would have just said, eh, and then fall to the ground. I would have received a death certificate rather than a U.S. visa during that time. I know I could not have come up with an answer. But God is so good that when God gives you peace, He gives you peace. Amen? Amen? 
And the answer came even before he finished me asking me the question. And the answer went like this. Sir, a while ago you were asking for a regular monthly income. But emergencies, sir, are not regular. <laughs> that is quite a smart answer, isn't it? And friends, I'm not that smart. True story. And you know what? When those things came out of my mouth, I know for a fact that it was not from me. And I have this expression at the back of my head like... <laughs> yes, friends. That's what we will be when we see God working in our lives. You'll know for a fact that it's not because of your brilliance. It's not because of your preparation. It's not because of your influence. It's not because of what you have. It's only because of your God. Amen? Amen. And, this, and this person was, was even more confused. I told him, sir, I, I really wanted to be honest from the very beginning. I really wanted to come clean. I don't want to give you a salary range that I don't earn. And I don't want to give you a bank account that I don't have. Sir, I don't have a bank account for the past two years. I have been living by faith. And he looked at me and said, <laughs> then tell me. How should I feel in this question? <laughs> Monthly income. And I said, honestly speaking, sir, I, I don't know. So he went in, he said, okay. Monthly income, he typed in, not applicable. <laughs> yes, he typed in, not applicable. He asked me a few more questions and then he told me, congratulations, your application has been approved. And I asked, what? <laughs> My dear friends, I'm not joking because even until then, I was not hoping that I'll, I'll receive a visa. I just went there. I was trying to prove to the Lord that he's wrong. I was trying to protect his funds. And I was, and I was wrong. And when people tell me, no, Jem, you, you receive that because you deserve it. I said, you just don't know. I don't deserve that. It's only because of the goodness of God. Amen? Amen. And when, when, he, when he confirmed to me and he said, your visa will be mailed to you in five working days. I could not believe it. I was calling my sister, and, and my sister told me, it's really God's will for you to go. And I said, you know what? It's really God's will. Because even before I stood up for the interview, there was this conviction in my heart, and I know it was the Holy Spirit. And the conviction came like this. When you get your visa approved, it's not because of what you have, because you have nothing. It's not because of who you are, because you are nobody. It will only be because of our God. Amen? Amen? And my dear friends, when I received the visa, they gave me a 10-year multiple entry. <laughs> Here, I want to tell you that God wants His signature so obviously printed in everything that we do. Amen? Amen. That, when, that when we receive the success, we could not take the glory from Him. In all your ways, what? Acknowledge, Acknowledge Him and he will continue directing our path. And, and the moment I saw that God wants to be obvious, my dear friends, God wants us to brag about him. And you know what? It's awesome to brag about him. I have nothing to brag about myself. I'm too short. <laughs> but you know what? My shortness, my tininess, just gives so much emphasis on how big my God is. My dear friends, God deserves all the praises, the glory, and the honor. Amen? And I love this beautiful quote here from, this is from God's Amazing Grace, page 319, paragraph 3. It says here, man can accomplish nothing without God. How much can we accomplish? Nothing. Can you say it with more conviction? Nothing. Can you say it with more heart? Nothing. You know what, my dear friends, I made you repeat that statement again and again because we don't really fully believe it. There's a beautiful quote, but we don't feel fully believe it. Because you know what? If we fully believe that without God we are nothing, everything in our lives will change. The way we worship, the way we serve God, the tenor of our conversation, even the way we sing, it will change. When you know that without God you are nothing. A friend of mine was listening to my sermon and he objected after my talk, I said, you know what, Jem, your talk was, was good, but there's one thing that I don't want to agree with. I said, what was that? That part when you said, without God, we are nothing. I said, why? 
because I've been away from the church. 32, 36 years, I've been away from the church. And I was still accomplishing a lot of wonderful things. I was successful in this and that. And then I'm thinking, oh Lord, that's a difficult stuff there. And the Lord gave me the answer. And I told the guy, you know what, friend? You're only able to accomplish all those things because of the goodness of God. If the Lord fully removed his finger from you, you know what you'd become? Nothing. Remember Nebuchadnezzar? Roaming around Babylon for like seven years, acting like a beast. If God will remove his reason from us, my dear friends, you would be nothing. But only because of the goodness of God that we are still like this. Amen? So when I came back to my hometown, my sister-in-law asked me a question. So Jen, uh, when are you going to the US? And I said, I don't know yet. What do you mean you don't know yet? Do you even have a ticket? And I said, I don't have a ticket yet. So how are you gonna go? And I told him, it's the Lord's problem, not mine. <laughs> I was saying those words and my knees were shaking. And, and he told, she told me, you're just crazy. So I went to the conference office. I'm trying to complete all the stuff that I need to complete. And while I was there, I received a phone call and the phone call went like this. Jem, I saw on Facebook that you got your visa approved. So when are you going? I said, I don't know yet. Same question, same answer. I said, how are you gonna go? I said, it's the Lord's problem, not mine. By the way, my dear friends, I'm, I'm bound to go a week, less than a week, and I don't have a ticket. And this person said, oh, that's why the Lord has been bothering me. I'll pay for your fare. <laughs> friends, this was January. January was, was the peak of travel. And friends, when I received the ticket, the ticket amounted to 2,700 US dollars. That was the most expensive ticket I've seen. So, but you know what? It's not about the amount of ticket. It's about the faithfulness of our God. Amen? Amen. And the moment I went back home, another sister asked me, so, uh, do you have pocket money? And I said, mm-hmm. But she did not ask me how much money I have in my pocket. <laughs> I have a lot of pockets. Can you guess how much money I have in my pocket? Zero. My dear friends, I'm poor, but I'm not that poor. <laughs> Actually, I am. I only have 50 pesos in my pocket. That's like a dollar. She did not ask me how much. And, and one by one, the Lord just provided. One person gave me an envelope, and inside was 250 US dollars. One person gave me $100. One person gave me two boxes of Dove winter soap. And I'm thinking, Lord, you're even concerned of my dry skin. And one person gave me a lip balm. Lord, you're even concerned about my dry lips. My dear friends, this is one thing I've learned from our God. Before we even realize our need, the Lord sees it and provides ahead of us. Isn't he faithful? Your amen is so weak. Isn't it faithful? Yes. Amen. The amen is not for the minister. The amen is for you. It will be confirmed in your heart that you serve a faithful God. And Okay, when I arrive in, in Amazing Facts, I pay the amount, the 125 US dollars, and that's like an insurance bond. And when the teacher saw that that's the only amount that I was able to pay, he asked me to go to his office. I said, Jem, I want to talk to you about, about something. And I said, oh, I'm in trouble. The moment I sat down, he told me, uh, I don't want to push you or anything, but I just want to know, how are you gonna pay for the remaining balance? And I said, sir, I honestly, I don't know. But the Lord gave me the visa that I'm not supposed to have. And the Lord gave me the ticket at the last minute. So for sure, the Lord wants me to be here. So I don't know when and I don't know how, but the Lord will pay for that amount. And the teacher told me, okay, I will give you the last due date for payment. That's a month before our graduation. That's three months from now. The training is four months. And I said, okay, sir, praise the Lord. And then he told me, oh, by the way, food is not included in a tuition fee. <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh. So I asked him, so how much should I budget for food? And then he asked me, is this a tight budget? So I looked him straight in the eye and said, very, very, very tight budget, sir. <laughs> And then he gave me a history of, of Sacramento. He said, Jem Sacramento is the capital of California, and you're living in Rocklin. 
Rucklin is one of the most expensive places to live. So if you're planning to eat out most of the time, he said, do you know how to cook? I said, uh-oh. I said, so budget around 120 to 140 US dollars. And I said, per month, sir? She said, no, per week. My jaw just dropped, my dear friends. I only have like $110 in my pocket. I'm thinking, Lord, am I supposed to live for the next four months when my budget was barely enough for a week? And you know what? The Lord reminded me. Who gave you the visa? Who gave you the ticket at the last minute? Who gave you Dove winter soap? Who gave you the lip balm? Friends, we often forget, don't we? We often forget. And the Lord says in last day events, we have nothing to fear for the future except we what? We forget. If there's something that we have to look back on, my dear friends, it's supposed to be the faithfulness of our God. We have to look back on the goodness of the, of the Lord that has been given to us, the faithfulness of our Father. So I moved on. And friends, the first time I went to the grocery store, and you know what, Filipinos, when the first time we, we go to a different country, we bring out a calculator and we try to, to convert into our currency. And when I saw, my dear friends, my heart just sang, and I'm thinking, Lord, how am I going to survive? I was even tempted to kneel down the aisle and said, Lord, please rain down manna from heaven. And the Lord did. Every single week he provided. Because he says in Philippians 4 verse 19, and my God shall what? Supply some of your needs. Praise the Lord, you're listening. All of your needs. And my dear friends, God just provided one after another. And there's one thing that I've learned. I've learned from my father. But every time I receive something, I have to set aside what belongs to the Lord. My father will always tell me, do not play around with the sacred money. But my dear friends, sometimes when, when we are in need, the tithe looks so attractive, isn't it? I have some conversation, argument with a $20 bill, like, stop staring at me. <laughs> and I begin to realize I'm coveting what belongs to the Lord. And by using it, you are stealing from the Lord. So you covet, you steal from the Lord, that's not good. And then I said, Lord, please change my heart. And that's one prayer that the Lord wants to answer. Change of heart, amen? amen? And the Lord made me realize it's not just a 10% that belongs to Him, it's the whole 100%. And when I realized that, I begin to realize the 10% is not even enough. So I give another 10%. You know what, friends, now it's different because I'm giving cheerfully. And what does the Lord say about the cheerful giver? He loves them. It's like shoveling on the Lord's side, and the Lord loves to shovel to your side as well. And God shovels faster than you. And he has a bigger shovel. And then my friend told me later on, said, your illustration is wrong. The Lord does not use a shovel. He uses a tractor. Friends, you'll never win with a tractor. One thing I've learned, my dear friends, if we have some financial crisis, it means to say that we have not, maybe we have missed something that we should give to the Lord. Amen? Because it says that you could never outgive God. And prove me now. And your storehouse will never be enough. That is a promise. Amen? Amen? It will overflow. It will overflow. And don't give just expecting something in return. But you know what? Expect this as well because it has been promised. Don't be motivated because of the return. Amen? Give because it's the right thing to do. So... And this is one thing I've realized. The more we receive blessings, sometimes we forget about the blesser. Our vision is clouded out by all the blessings that we forget the blesser. And my knees begin to shake again. Because you know what? A few, a few weeks before our, before our graduation, a few weeks after the due date, I still have $2,000 balance. But before that, I'd like to tell you as well, because we had an evangelistic series before the graduation, and some of our attendees could not afford to go, and they don't have gas money. And my friends was collecting donations from our friends, and I begin to realize, I have that second tithe. What if I give that as a gas money? And I asked the pastor, and the pastor said, you know what, Jen, as long as you don't touch the first tithe, that's, that's okay. And I was giving my money. And remember, I was a businessman, so I, I jot down everything that I've given, and the total was that I've given out was 380 US dollars. You know why I'm telling you this? 
Because I just want you to know that is just the tithes. That is just the 10% of what the Lord has placed in my hands without asking for anything. And I'm thinking, wow, remind me how much money I have in my pocket before I left the Philippines. One dollar. Does it make sense that I'm giving away 380? That's the Lord's math for you, my dear friends. That's the Lord's math for you. The Lord does not work with one minus one, two plus two. The Lord works with exponential mathematics, my dear friends. Do not hold back from Him and He will not hold back from you. Amen? So, and now, I'm in this situation. I'm thinking, Lord, how am I going to pay my $2,000 balance? And by the way, before that, I would receive like checks in my mail. $100, $50. There was even one time $500 anonymous donor. And it would just come. But it stopped. The Lord wants to get me attention. And now my heart is pounding. I'm having sleepless nights again. Praise God. And the second night, I realized I needed to pray. So I knelt down and I said, Lord, please help me out here. And I was weeping before God. I said, I really don't know what to do. And you know what? The Lord reminded me, Jem, who took care of you for the past three months and a half that you were here? I said, Lord, I'm sorry, it was all you. And I surrendered that to the Lord again. And the moment I surrendered that, I had peace. And I slept. Now, the next day, the moment I, I stepped inside a school, the registrar came in the classroom and said, Jem, can I talk to you in my office? And I said, oh, this is it brought me to the office. Friends, that was the longest 30 steps of my life. And when I sat down, she lifted up the paper, and I know that was the bill, because I saw numbers. She lifted up the bill, said, Jem, I want to talk to you about this. Friends, I don't have the courage to look at the bill. I was just looking at the floor. Jem, I want to talk to you about this. Second time, still looking at the floor. So she got up, went to me, and said, Jem, I want to talk to you about this. Friends, for the third time that she spoke, when I focused on the bottom right of that paper, there was this stamp, fully paid. <laughs> Balance zero. The moment I saw that, my whole body began to shake. Tears just flowed out of my eyes that I did not even realize where they came from. I'm a talkative guy, but for the first time, I was speechless. She lifted me up, hugged me, and now both of us were crying. And all the while I thought I know how to pray, but when I opened my mouth, all the things that I was prepared to do left me, and all I could say was, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. My dear friends, remember a night before, I was busy complaining to the Lord, crying to the Lord, and I did not even realize that the Lord was busy answering my prayer. We have a faithful God, my dear friends, amen? Before I could even ask, he already answered. And that reminded me of this beautiful verse from Isaiah 65, verse 24, which says, and it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they were yet speaking, I will hear. My dear friends, we serve a faithful God, but the question is, are we faithful to him? He has been faithful to us step by step, year by year. We come to him, we give him all the beautiful New Year's resolution, all the beautiful promises, but we fail. But we do it all, maybe not for the glory of his name. My dear friends, we serve a wonderful God, don't we? We serve a faithful God. And my dear friends, I want to invite you. I don't want to end this beautiful Sabbath without inviting you, if it is your desire. If the Lord has spoken to your heart, and I know the Lord has spoken to each and every heart, even before this sermon began, that this year, Lord, I want to do better. Lord, this year, I want you to be the only one that consumes me that I'd be sustained. I have been exhausted for the past years, and you now know the reason why. Because Christ is not the one consuming you. 
My dear friends, if you want to be sustained by Christ, if you want to be consumed by Christ and by Christ alone, I'd like to invite you to come. And I'll do a special prayer as my two friends will, will render beautiful music. Come, my dear friends. You're not standing up for me. You're standing up for the Lord. And please come as near as possible. Praise God. What is holding you back? There is nothing worth losing heaven for, my dear friends. There's nothing that could be more beautiful than the face of your Savior. Praise God. God, my dear friends, the Lord has been desiring for a people whom he could shine through. And he could not shine through us unless we give it all to him. 
unless we are not satisfied by just playing church. Time is short, friends. Christ is coming soon. We should make a decision which part we would be in, which boat we would be in. You are ready in the church. Let's give it all. And you have nothing to fear, my dear friends, because when you look back in the past, your God has been faithful to you. He has not failed you, and he never will. Your God could not lie. And he wants to give the best to his children. Let's show the world who our God is. And as we sing our closing song, our closing song, we will sing only first and last stanza. Great is thy faithfulness, and let us be reminded of the faithfulness of the beautiful God that we serve.